he's back and better than ever. Mel Gibson once tried to warn us about the dark side of Hollywood, speaking out against the things he saw within the industry. As expected, his bold stance led to him being blacklisted and faced one setback after another. Of course, I'm not defending some of his more defamatory statements, but he and his latest works are nothing short of amazing and inspiring. Before I go on with the video, watch his chilling statements in the next clip. When I came over here, I was, oh God, I was in my, my uh, mid-twenties. Right. The first time I really came over here. You know, I had a whole bunch of weird paranoid suspicions about what the hell was going on because there was a lot of stuff I couldn't understand. Right. Um, and nobody was really bothering to explain it to me. They don't. <clears throat> and, it, 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 and I formed a bunch of opinions about the town and about the people in it that were like, surely that couldn't be because a whole place can't be like, you know, weird town, you know, where the stranger wanders in and, and all the people are in the bar and they all shut up when he looks at him and, mm -hmm. and they tell you don't go out of the house on the hill. and It's like that. Mm -hmm. And then you go away and you think, no, that's, I was wrong. I mean, that's insane thinking. I'm paranoid. I imagined that stuff. That couldn't be the reason for why so-and-so was acting like, could it? Mm. And then you find out later on the track that you are exactly on track mm. with a lot of this stuff. For context, this was filmed back in 1998, but only went viral recently because many other actors started to push back against the absurdities taking place in the industry. And Gibson is completely correct. His criticism comes from his own experiences in an industry that can be best described as hypocritical, morally bankrupt, and obsessed with image and status over authenticity and genuineness. By the way, make sure to subscribe for more discussions like this. The funny thing is you don't have to dig deep to figure this out. For instance, Hollywood's award shows, such as the Oscars and Golden Globes, are notorious for their preachy political speeches, which are delivered by stars who live lifestyles far removed from the issues they're talking about. These are nothing short of shallow virtue signaling rather than true engagement with real problems. The same stars who speak about wealthy inequality, for instance, live in multi-million dollar mansions and travel in private jets. But Gibson wasn't done just yet and revealed some of the unspoken rules within the industry. Is there a collective uh, ethos or... Um, somebody once said my problem was I didn't understand the social contract here. Yeah, I now understand what that means. Yeah. Do you understand it? The social contract? Yeah. I, th I think I do. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't take very long. If, if, and I'm sure you've experienced this if you've stayed here for any length of time. You come in, you're fresh from the outside. You're off the boat from the farm, still got shit on your shoes. You're in here. People are charmed by that, mm. that you've still got shit on your shoes. But it doesn't take very long before you realize, or before it gets to you, it's cascading on you all the time. You can't get away from certain attitudes, from certain modes of behavior that this town and the industry dictate. And no matter how strong you are when you come in off the farm mm. with those convictions and, those, and a certain line of attack, no matter how strong you are, you are going to be affected by this place. And we've seen that happen time and time again. Many aspiring actors and actresses who come from simple backgrounds find that once they enter the Hollywood scene, they're subtly or not so subtly pressured into adopting a lavish lifestyle to fit in and stay relevant. Despite their humble roots, they quickly learn that maintaining appearances in Hollywood means living well beyond their means, attending high-profile events, wearing designer clothes, and associating with the right people. You see, the industry's unspoken rules dictate that to stay visible, you must adhere to a certain standard of living. It also means that one must align with a set of political and social ideologies whether or not you truly believe in them. The industry is full of unwritten expectations about what you can and can't say publicly, what causes you should support, and who you should associate with. Speaking about or deviating from these norms typically results in losing roles and eventually being blacklisted. That's what happened with Gibson as he was ousted from the industry for over a decade. After his comeback, he appeared on The Tonight Show with Stephen Colbert. Watch how it went down here next. Now, I've never met you before we met backstage for the first sure. time. So, um, how are you doing? <laughs> you, you, you had some rough patches over the last yeah, 10 years. A rough patch. Uh-huh, and, and, and how was that? 
Eh, not my proudest moment. Not no? my proudest moment, no? Stephen. But, you know, 10 years go by. Yes. I worked a lot on myself. I'm yeah. actually healthier and happier than I've been in a long time, so uh -huh. that's cool. And I'm fortunate, you know. Was there a moment when you thought, okay, I'm going to get through this? Yeah. What was that moment, Mel Gibson? What was that moment? Was there a moment, like, was there a moment you can say, okay, uh, this is going to be okay. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going to, people are going to accept the apology and we're going to move forward. Just when I apologize, I think. Really? And, and, you know, of course, you take a hiding, and that's okay. But it's interesting. You say you took to hiding? No, no, you t t take a hiding. <laughs> oh, you take a hiding? The beating. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. Okay. So, you know, you take the shots. Yeah. You try not to yell too much. You be manful about it. Yes. You know, don't, you know, react too much. But it's interesting. It's a moment in time. It's a pity that one has to be defined with the label from, you know, having a nervous breakdown in the back of a police car on a bunch of double tequilas. But right. That's what it is. Right. Now, you know, this is not that moment shouldn't define the rest of my life. His story is truly inspiring. It all started after a series of allegations put him at the center of endless controversies, followed by a DUI arrest. This led him to being blacklisted from Hollywood, but that didn't stop him as he took the path to recovery with the help of Alcoholics Anonymous, which is a 12-step program and a support network to help people in battling against their alcoholism. I fully support it. Gibson commented on his recovery journey, saying, they say there's only three options. You go insane, you die, or you quit. That's the harsh reality. I'm an old hand at that. This proves the type of person he is. He also helped Robert Downey Jr. on his own journey towards sobriety, with RDJ noting, quote, when I couldn't get sober, he told me not to give up hope and encouraged me to find my faith, adding I couldn't get hired, so he cast me in the lead of a movie that was actually developed for him. And Gibson isn't back to just making superhero movies or talking about mainstream topics. The man is on a mission to tell interesting and thought-provoking stories. Reportedly, The Passion of the Christ Resurrection is currently under works and is expected to be released next year. Another movie Gibson released is Sound of Freedom, which sparked a lot of controversy because of how sensitive the topic was. Watch the next clip where Gibson appears in one of the promotional materials. One of the most disturbing problems in our world today is human trafficking and particularly the trafficking of children. Our future is our children. Now the first step in eradicating this crime is awareness. Go see Sound of Freedom. I thought it was a great movie and it covers the story of Tim Ballard who is a former US government agent and starts the organization to combat child trafficking in Colombia. Now you might be wondering what there is to be controversial about this topic. Isn't Hollywood supposed to tell us more similar stories? Well, to start off, the movie wasn't released by any major studio, meaning that they couldn't control the narrative and the direction the movie went. Multiple streaming platforms even reportedly refused to make the movie available for streaming on their platforms, such as Netflix and Amazon, with the director saying they went, quote, knocking on doors with Netflix, Amazon, and other studios, but none took it on. And some of them, they just didn't even answer my phone calls. We sent hundreds of different people messages from different people, nothing. But after a quick Google search, you can find that it is currently available for streaming on Amazon, Apple TV, Google Play Movies, and TV. This might explain, however, why the movie's release was delayed for five years and that it only got traction after a grassroots marketing campaign led by figures like Elon Musk, Tucker Carlson and Mel Gibson, I think society would be a much better place if we get more movies on such issues instead of getting another Marvel movie that follows the same format over and over again. But apart from this, what are your thoughts? Do you think Gibson's comeback can be replicated by other blacklisted actors? Let's get the conversation rolling in the comments down below.